commencing Operation Friendship. As we dive into today's comic, my personal favorite, we will discover the true meaning of kindness and goodwill, qualities every good conqueror should have. Now then, let us change the frequency and check in over everyone's favorite magic ponies. Hello and welcome to another special segment of Kilobytes Corner, where I cover the comics Onyx Prime is too busy to review. Today I'm here with a special guest, Lapis. Hello! Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, no problem, I got you! <laughs> <laughs> today we're going to cover the IDW Transformers Friendship in Disguise. And as always, spoiler warning. So if you haven't read it already, I highly recommend you go back, read it, and then come back and listen to the podcast. It's worth a read, come on! Yes, yes it is. Also, we have a goal to reach 500 subscribers. We will be holding a brand new kind of giveaway we've never done before. So make sure to click that subscribe button and tell your friends it's a good time. Now, onwards with the podcast. It's time for some fun facts and trivia. There are four comics in this, I want to say volume, but there's four individual comics that we're going to be reading. Uh, the first one was released August 5th, 2020, and the last one came out November 4th, 2020. The writers are James Asmus, Ian Flynn, and Sam Maggs. An art by Casey Kohler, Jack Lawrence, Sarah Peter Docher, Priscilla Tramontano, and Tony Flex. Now for some trivia. IDW had previously considered a crossover series between the two franchises a few years prior, but the project eventually fell through. In 2019, Andrew Griffith shared some primary art uh, he and Priscilla Tramontano had worked on as part of the proposal, which is pretty cool because it then happened. The very first page has Quibble Pants complain about how nonsensical the in-universe crossover between Daring Do and the Power Ponies is, with the sales pony telling him that it is just for fun. Pants have taken it to being the comic's way of basically telling the readers, "Don't think about it. This is too, this. Don't think about it, th this too hard. Just enjoy the crossover." And finally, Twilight responding to Megatron's attempt to fight by magically co uh, covering his fusion cannon barrel with an orange safety cap, which is no doubt a mythology gag to the fact that toys of Megatron in his gun mode, even high-end collectors-oriented figures have had to have these or the tip painted orange to comply with toy safety laws, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, Lapis, do you mind giving us some summaries of these comics? Yeah, absolutely. So, for these comics, the Autobots and Decepticons are transported to the world of Equestria, which is the, the main town for the ponies, by the evil changeling Queen Chrysalis. Twilight Sparkle meets Optimus Prime and Bumblebee, while Rarity meets Starscream and RC. Then we have Spike and Grimlock, who get an epic battle against the Constructicons. Thanks to Spike's quick thinking, the two were able to beat Devastator. Pinkie Pie and Gage get together on Pinkie's baking show. Shockwave shows up and the two have to work together to beat him. Next we had Fluttershy and Discord meeting Soundwave and his cassettes. Fluttershy is quick to make friends with Soundwave's animal companions. Rainbow Dash and Windblade decide to race. However, they're interrupted by Misfire and the Rainmaker Trio. Finally, Applejack has to deal with an infestation of Insecticons in her orchard. The Decepticons finally make their move against Equestria's kingdom alongside the Changelings. The Autobots, of course, fight back with their new pony friends. Just before true chaos can break out, Spike and Grimlock arrive just in time to send everybody back home. Awesome. Thank you so much. And we would also like to give a special shout out to our Patreons, the Art Matrix. Thank you so much for helping out the podcast. Thanks, we appreciate it! <laughs> yes, yes, we do a lot. Thank you. Lapis, shall we begin? My little pony, my little pony. Yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so our first story is called Transformations is Magic. We start on Equestria as a disgruntled comic book fan is angry about crossovers. 
which I loved a lot. <laughs> but suddenly a storm begins to form and we find Queen Chrysalis casting a spell to summon changelings from other worlds and aid her in her quest as Cybertronians rain down from the sky. Any fun uh, scenes that you liked? Uh, I was just a really big fan of the fact that Queen Chrysalis was being used because while I have not watched the entirety of the, the My Little Pony series, I have seen a good chunk of it. And I like Queen Chrysalis. It's really cool to have her be a main character in this. And the fact that she's the one who brings the bots to Equestria was pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know much about the My Little Ponies, but I really enjoyed Megatron and Shockwave fighting about the uh, space bridge being malfunctioning and oh, yeah. to have Shockwave <laughs> not activated. And Shockwave, Shockwave is like, but I have to gather data. <laughs> and then he <laughs> teleports everybody to Equestria as well because of the magic. <laughs> he had to know what was going on. Yeah, he, it's all about knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yep, knowledge is power, man, not friendship. Who cares about that? <laughs> knowledge and wisdom is the real power. And then my second favorite scene was after everybody's been teleported out, poor Grimlock arrives and he's like, yeah, be Grimlock, ready to, ah, uh, friends ditch Grimlock again. <laughs> it, it was great. Gosh, see, I'm curious as to uh, to where the other Dinobots were because uh, he mentioned that he was all alone. Where, where are the other, where are the boys? I don't know, we would, we'll have to read the 2019 continuity and see if if something happened to the other Dinobots. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm down for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving along, our next story is called Shine Like a Diamond. We follow Starscream, who is already planning to conquer this world, having the ponies craft him a cape and a crown already, which I found hilarious because he took no time at all to <laughs> take command <laughs> of the ponies and be like, I will you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really stepped in there and he's like, okay, guys, I'm your new king. Deal with it. <laughs> it was great. But his reign doesn't last long as RC arrives on the scene and makes him flee, which was like, yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> it, it was so funny. Uh, I really enjoyed that scene, mostly because that is the interaction with Rarity and RC. And I am a, I, I really like Rarity. She is one of my favorite of the main six from the, the My Little Pony series. I like her personality a lot. And just seeing her and RC interacting, oh, they, they talk about being kindred spirits. And it just put this big smile on my face while I was reading it. I thought it was really cute. <laughs> yeah. Well, it did to me, too. I don't know much, again, of My Little Ponies, but, like, how their conversation and how they were very alike, I really enjoyed it. And, like, it made me smile, even though I don't know much about the characters. So I think, like, they really portrayed that emotion and, and that kindred spiritness between them. Oh, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. I, and before, I'm, I'm going to mention this because... I, I think it'd be cool to add. While Kilo and I were talking about this when we were reading the comics, he mentioned to me that at first he had thought Rarity might be a villain because she was helping out Starscream. But after getting to talk with RC, you know, you, you get to see her true colors and it shows that she was really just trying to protect the people that work with her. Yeah. Yeah. Which was great. It was a, a, a twist. Especially yeah. for, for a reader that doesn't know much, it was it was good because you think it's going to go one way, then it switches. Mm-hmm. Humans well, are on. My favorite, yeah, my favorite last scene of this encounter is when Rarity and RC are fighting Starscream with his backup because he comes back with Skywarp and Thundercracker. And they throw the cape back at Starscream and he <laughs> tangles with Skywarp. And Skywarp says, I'm out. This is stupid. And teleports away. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so funny because he just ditched Starscream there. It was just Starscream on his own at that point. It was really funny. I, yes. I actually, it's hard to make me laugh out loud if it's just me in my own setting. That comic and that scene actually made me giggle, so good for them. <laughs> yes, yes, it was so good. But moving on to our next story, it's called Inspiring. And we start off with Spike as he writes a message to Twilight Sparkle, telling them that he finds himself in a strange new world with a new big bot called Grimlock. Any any fun scenes? Oh, gosh. I really, really liked this this interaction because 
It was just so perfect. Spike is a baby dragon, and getting to see this absolutely massive metal dinosaur was, like, the biggest thing ever for him. It, it was so cute. There were so many scenes where his eyes were, like, little sparkles. <laughs> uh, yes. But in general, like, the Spike and Grimlock team up, yeah, absolutely amazing. 10,000 out of 10. I really, <laughs> I really enjoyed that. <laughs> yes, I really liked it. I like that it's a also like a nod to G1 because there's also the human spike. Yes, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they kind of like show that in one of the, the later comics, which I'll bring up uh, yes. later. But yeah. I, I really liked that. <laughs> yeah, and it was such a good scene or like little story between them because Spike doesn't feel like he, uh, he's worthy or he doesn't know much or, he, you know, he's not somebody that people can depend on. Mm -hmm. And in the moment when Devastator is fighting Grimlock, he reads modern Cybertronian for everyday conversations and Teletron 1 for dummies and figures out how to turn on the thrusters on the arc and beat Devastator for Grimlock. And it was it was such a good moment at the end because they have this awesome, inspiring speech between each other. And Grimlock tells him that he's way bigger than what he thinks. And so it's oh. very good. Yeah, that I the fact that Spike defeated the constructor cons is absolutely wild. I really like that. <laughs> uh that that scene specifically, I like when when Devastator realizes and then he just like gets blasted and turns to dust. It looks like I lo it's so funny. <laughs> it's really good. And uh Grimlock's Grimlock's pep talk to Spike uh that that may or may not have put tears in my eyes. It's very sweet. I really it was it. so touching. It was so yes. cute. It was very oh. good. Yeah, I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next story is called They Eat Ponies, Don't They? Question mark. Where we follow Pinkie Pie and Gage as they record a cooking show in the spirit of cultural exchange. But suddenly the ground shakes and from a space bridge in the back, Shockwave emerges trying to bake the ponies into Energon snacks. Would you like to... Explain to the listeners what that means. Yeah. He 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 wanted to 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 turn the ponies into energon, and he turned his hands, well, his one hand and then his gun arm. He turned it into a spatula and a whisk, and and I think at one point it was a cheese grater, <laughs> and he was just trying to capture the ponies so he could bake them, which was very interesting. Yes, it was such a dark concept for such a lighthearted comic <laughs> because he's like, I'm going to bake these this ponies into Energon goodies. And I'm like, wait, what? They're fattening us up so they can eat us. Why did it go so dark all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah, they use Shockwave. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I guess that's true. I do like that when they defeat Shockwave, they use a, a pan and they... they splat his face so it's like uh like a 2d <laughs> you gotta <laughs> it flatten it. it's pretty funny yeah, it was very yeah. good yeah i i personally don't have too much to say on that portion just because uh the the main autobot used gauge i think gauge was made specifically for these comics and i don't know the character much i liked the design it reminded me a lot of glyph actually yeah. but yeah Pinkie pie is one of my least favorite of the the ponies just because her personality kind of gets on my nerves, but mm. I did, I did enjoy the fact that they are trying to combine each other's culture yeah. and accept each other. And I did like the end scene where Pinky tries gauges, uh, the, the bake. I don't remember what it was. It was like Energon filling. It, it was something. like a casserole. Yeah. And Pinkie Pie eats that and was like, Ugh. and then Gage ate a cupcake. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It's pretty it good. Was great. Yeah, I, I don't know much about Gage either. I think this is the first time they are in a continuity. So they only appear in the 2019 continuity. So it's a new character mm -hmm. for the IDW continuity. So once we read that, listeners, me and Nonix and possibly our third host, uh, we'll tell you more about that character. Shall we move on? Yeah, let's get to the next one. <laughs> the next story is called Pet Sounds. We find Fluttershy enjoying some tea with Discord when suddenly a big thud is heard from outside. Soundwave has arrived and is ready to scout and secure. <laughs> Any fun scenes? That is, this entire part 
was probably one of my favorites because Soundwave is my favorite Decepticon and there were so many there's so many things I could talk about but I really liked the fact that Fluttershy immediately was like oh my god you have pets <laughs> and then was just treating Soundwave's cassettes with all the love and affection in the world it was so cute and I, I really liked the the end scene specifically with that one where Megatron calls Soundwave is like hey ma'am uh, we're ready. Come meet me. And he's like, "Yeah, in a bit." And every <laughs> and all of the all of the cassettes are like hanging out and getting love and affection. Oh, it was so cute. <laughs> yeah, I like that all the the creature cassettes were really liked Fluttershy, and then Frenzy mm-hmm. was like, "No, back off, get out. We're ready to rumble." And then the, everybody just looks at him. He's like, "Oh, I guess I made a a mistake." <laughs> Yeah, Frenzy's like, um, my bad, guys. Didn't mean it. (laughs) I was trying to put up a, like, a front, a big, mean front, and it didn't work out, you know, kind of thing. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. It was so funny. Just the fact that everybody immediately turned on Frenzy. Yeah. It was pretty good. good. But I do like the the reason why they become friends is because Soundwave says that friendship is superior, and so Fluttershy is like, what? Oh, I agree. And then they're like, okay, we can all be friends. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. And I I also just really enjoyed getting to see Discord as well, because he is a pretty fun character. And I liked, I liked the fight with him and Soundwave where Soundwave is like, you gotta stop being nonsensical because I'm going to kill you if you don't. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Because I don't know much about Discord, but I'm assuming it has abilities to morph and change its structure, yeah, right? Because he, he, he was like a, a chaos. He was an evil character when you first met him. He, I think he was introduced in like a two or three part episode thing. And he was a bad guy, but he was like a chaos demon kind of. And then uh, Fluttershy was just so great that he was like, dang, I guess I'm not going to be bad anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. No, that was cool. That was cool. I like the the ability that they can morph their body and kind of change mm-hmm. it. Because at one point it looks robotic and he does change the little critters to be robotic yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, I liked that. So, I thought that was fun. That was fun. So moving on, the next story is called Flying Foxtrot. We meet Rainbow Dash and Windblade as they both decide to have a race to determine who is the fastest. But it gets interrupted by Misfire and the Rainmakers. I... I really enjoyed this one. It was cute. I like the that the Rainmakers and Misfire are in the in the comics. We didn't see much about uh, about the Rainmakers in the first NEW. Uh, mm-hmm. We did follow Misfire with the Scavengers, but I do feel like they change Windblade a little bit. It feels like Windblade in this continuity might be from Velocitron because she was all about speed and wanting to race more than kind of being more proper and. Being part yeah. of like breaching the the different cultures and you know making sure there was peace. So other than that, it was it was kind of like a little fun race. There wasn't much of a race. It was more of a a fight, and then finally them being like, "Oh, we can be friends. We could we can we don't have to determine who's quicker." <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked the the personalities kind of clashing with Rainbow Dash and Windblade because. They both thought each other were really cool, but they're like, dang, I'm better than you at the same time. <laughs> and I, I definitely I definitely got that vibe that Windblade is from Velocitron in this version, which I think is a fun little thing for her. But yeah, no, I was I was most excited to see the Rainmakers, to be honest, because they changed Misfire's characterization a bit from the Scavengers, but I, I it's because he's still with the Decepticons at this point, I assume. When yeah. we see him with the scavengers, he's kind of ditched. The, the Decepticons are the party's kind of dead, and he's kind of yeah. becoming his own guy. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, I was excited to see the Rainmakers. You really don't see them much anywhere ever. So <laughs> yeah, but no, it's always good when they 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 add a lot of old characters or characters. Yeah, that don't the more get a lot obscure of the ones. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Strength in numbers is our next story, and so. Applejack wakes up to see an infestation of Insecticons destroying her apple trees. And nothing seems to work. But worry not, because the Apple family is here to save their farm. I know you really enjoyed this one, so I'll let you (laughs) (laughs) take care of that story. Yes. Oh my gosh. I... 
Obviously, I was a big fan of this as a major Insecticon fan. I think you might be biased. And the fact that I got to actually see Kickback and Shrapnel and Bombshell all together again was exciting. I also enjoyed the fact that they threw in a couple of the more obscure Insecticons that you didn't see in G1, but you saw like released in other shows and as figures and stuff. So that was cool. There was like a false kickback. I don't remember what his actual name was, but <laughs> if you if you're ever confused which one is which, the the kickback that has the Decepticon symbol on his head, that is the the actual kickback. <laughs> we don't think it's coincidence. But uh <laughs> yeah, I was a big fan of when kickback and false kickback were like eating the apple trees and they just were so happy about it. They're like, "Man, we could go somewhere else, but this is scrumptious. We're going to stay right <laughs> here." <laughs> yes, that's a very good scene. Yeah, I liked that one. And then just the the scene with the whole Apple family versus the Insecticons was phenomenal. I wish the Insecticons would have come out on top, but this is, you know, Friendship is Magic show or yeah. uh, comic. So <laughs> the, the Insecticons got their the tailpipes handed to them. But I, I did enjoy this one. I thought that all of the wonderful showing of the insecticons was, was pretty good yeah i liked it too uh, i did like uh big max character design uh, <laughs> yeah. i think they, they look pretty cool and i like it that i think it's granny applejack mm -hmm. yeah granny she's Smith. fighting yeah she's fighting bombshell and she's bound he, he's throwing his mind control grenades and he she's bouncing them off and one lands on him she's like get out of here and he's like okay order accepted i'll leave and he just leaves which <laughs> i thought was pretty funny it was pretty good yeah. yeah i i like getting to see the apple family because it's a ridiculous that's the thing in the show is that it's a ridiculously large family and it was kind of wild seeing all of them together. But yeah, I, I like Big Mac the most out of all of them. He's, yeah. he's, I think he's Applejack's older brother, if I remember. And his whole thing is like every time you see him, he goes, yup. Like that's his, <laughs> <laughs> that's his catchphrase. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, in our final story as the name the finale <laughs> nice as as the decepticons attack princess candace castle in order to seal the magic but worry not candace is not alone as the autobots are here and they have some backup i thought this one was pretty fun it's the conclusion of the four comic book arc and not really an arc it's just more separate stories but we started with a little war and then we end with a little war. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like that the Autobots got recruits. And so we see Ironhide, we see Prowl, and then RC, Windblade, and Ga Gage are back with the Autobots. And so there's a little bit of a brawl between all the factions. We see some ponies uh, make some fun quips and, and jokes because I think it's Pinkie Pie comes out of Soundwave's cassette and just throws him a pie. Which yeah. I think was pretty funny. So yeah, it, no, it was, it was cool. good. The <laughs> the whole end scene, I just loved all of the art that they had for it. In general, I was a big fan of the art style for this series. It managed to match both My Little Pony and Transformers, which I think is a pretty big feat in itself. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I, I liked I liked the end here. I think it was fun getting to see everybody go at it, and then I liked the section where Megatron was like. Chrysalis, why are we losing? And Chrysalis like, that sucks. Uh, we'll just come back again and throw hands some more later. And Megatron's like, no, that's stupid. We're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you're pathetic, which I thought was, it was pretty funny. But yeah. hands down, the two best lines in the entire series were said in this part of the comic. And it was, <laughs> it, it was transform and trot out till every pony are one. Yes. And I stand by that. <laughs> <laughs> Those were great lines, and I really like it. It was such a great combination of Transformers and My Little Pony in those two lines, and I am so happy that they put that in there. Yeah, I like that the end, the Megatron's like, there's nothing you can defeat us, and then they're like, yes, but we have friendship. And then yeah. <laughs> Optimus yeah. opens his Matrix, and, and, and it's just like they get defeated with... Yeah, uh, I which is Twilight, I think it's the yeah, name. Yeah, Twilight Sparkle, where she was well, just like right Sparkle, in front yeah. of the, uh, the, the Matrix of Leadership. I liked that scene. Yeah. We also get Grimlock and Spike coming mm -hmm. in with his exosuit to save the day. 
Yep, and, that was that was the thing I mentioned earlier. That's how they paid homage to the original Spike is they gave they gave Dragon Spike uh Transformer Human Spike's exosuit. And yeah. I was like, bang, it's the little man. <laughs> <laughs> It was great. And I do like the ending catchphrase or title. It says, after a delightful tea and Energon party, they all return <laughs> home. <laughs> yeah. The Autobots destroy the space bridge, but Shockwave save the Cornets. And it says, the end may be to be continued. Yeah, it sounds like Shockwave is looking to take the ponies to them instead of going to the ponies. Yeah, so we shall see. But are you, is there anything else you would like to cover or are you ready for Rotstar rating? You know, I think I have gotten all of my pony transformer shenanigans out. So I, I'm good to, <laughs> <laughs> I'm good to move to the rating. Okay. So out of five Rotstars, how, what would you give these comics? You know what? I'm giving it five out of five. You can't, you can't stop me. There's nothing wrong with these comics. <laughs> there was nothing, there was nothing in these comics that wasn't phenomenal. Huh. Isn't that interesting? So I stand by that rating. Five, five out of five broad stars. Yeah. I think I'll follow you as well with five out of five. It was just a good fun, like nothing, nothing too serious. And it was all about the fun of the crossover and just like taking it very chill and like uh, allowing every pony to have their own, you know, characteristics come out and kind of enjoy mm -hmm. them in their own little adventures. So I think after it was like, Fun to read. It made me laugh and it made me giggle. So five out of five. Yeah, yeah, good, good reason. It was just, it was, it was perfect the way they matched each pony with a transformer, and the interactions were just so fun. It made me laugh. It, it almost made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, no, it's a great. I really highly recommend it. If it, if you guys haven't read it, highly, highly recommend it. Awesome. But listeners, what do you think of these comics? How many Rod says would you give it? Let us know by leaving a comment below. We do not have any emails today, but if you'd like to get in contact with us, you can send us an email at swervesbarpodcast at gmail.com. That is S-W-E-R-V-E-S-B-A-R podcast at gmail.com. Uh, Lapis, do you have any new toys? Anything you would like to mention as our ending thoughts to the listeners? You know, I actually have two things that I'd like to mention. First off, I would like to give Kilobyte and Onyx Prime a huge, huge thank you. They gave me an early birthday present of the one of the very few kickback figures that I do not own. It is absolutely gorgeous, and I love him. He is the, the kickback that is designed based off of the, the Fall of Cybertron games. Who's He's got like the four arms because he's got the ones that sit over his shoulders and I, I just I really like him he's amazing I've been looking for that figure for years and I am so thankful that you guys got him for me and I really do appreciate it yeah no <laughs> we're, we're glad you you enjoy it so yeah he's happy birthday he's fun. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> and then uh my other thought is y'all guys if you haven't watched it yet <laughs> I had a I had a I had a one shot that I I ran for our transform and roll out portion of the podcast. So Transformers D and D. It was a lot of fun. I had never been a DM before, and I really enjoyed it. There's a lot of fun interactions in this story. I, just a little little synopsis is basically we are following the original group, the very first Knights of Cybertron. The first members, as they are on a quest to help a high higher up in one of the original tribes on Cybertron, trying to help him find his son. And yeah, at this point, so it's ancient Cybertron, so all of the 13 original primes had their own tribes, and there's bots that worship the, the prime, so they're in specific tribes. It, it's just, it's a really cool concept. It was a lot of fun, and I think the players also really enjoyed themselves. So I, I highly, highly recommend you go check that out. Yeah, and you can go check it out at Transform and Roll Out over on YouTube or your favorite podcasting app. And thank you so much for running that one, Chad. It was very fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I hope to one day be able to do a, a part two for that. But enough enough about me. <laughs> Kilo, <laughs> you got anything you want to you wanna bring up? Any end thoughts? Yes, uh, listeners, I have some exciting news. Season four of the podcast will begin in three weeks. 
Onyx and I, and possibly our third host, like I mentioned before, will be covering the IDW 2019 continuity. Uh, but if you are a Patreon member, you will be able to tune in in two weeks. So two weeks early. So if, if you would like to do that and support the show in the same way, you can also sign up on Patreon. Links will be in the description below. I do have a Twitch that I stream on. It's Kilobyte Prime uh, or twitch.tv slash Kilobyte Prime where you can catch me live playing fun games with my co-host Lapis and some of our other members of the D&D. And if that's something you would like to do, you're welcome to stop by and hang out with us. If you've enjoyed this episode, consider sharing it with your friends and subscribing. If you want to help out the show even further, we have started a Patreon. All of the proceeds will go to supporting the show and keeping the lights on. Of course, we have some tiers that offer other forms of gratitude, such as 3D printed files and entry to our Discord channel. You'll even get early access to our comic review videos a week before they're publicly released and also our D&D videos. We have a goal to reach 500 subscribers. We'll be holding a brand new kind of giveaway we've never done before. So make sure to click that subscribe button and tell your friends it's a good time. And as always, we hope you're all staying safe out there. Thank you so, so much for listening. Till every pony are one. Till every pony are one. <laughs>